I believe that, amen. Yes, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We're getting ready, prepared to go before the very throne of grace yes, and to hear what the Spirit of God is saying yes, to the church today. Yes, I was speaking with my sister, and she was telling me that somehow her husband rigged the TV where they could watch me on TV yeah. on Sunday morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the reason I say that is call people. Everybody's not going to go to church, but everybody needs to hear the word. That's why I say call people and, and tell them to tune in. And some people will tune in just out of curiosity, just to see what the person looks like on TV. Some people will tune in just to be able to say to you, I saw them. So, so whatever the reason why they tuned in, let them tune in to hear the word of God because church, we are living in the last days. And in the last days, the judgment of God will abound. God's judgment will abound, church. And those that have not received the Lord Jesus Christ will be judged for their own sin. And you that have received the Lord Jesus Christ, he has already been judged for your sins. For your sins. So let's get as many people saved as we possibly can so that they would not be judged for their sins. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would by your spirit speak to our hearts. Illuminate us on the inside, Father God. Give us revelation, God of your word. And we declare, speak, Lord, for your servants listen that we may hear what thus saith the Lord to us, that we may know what we ought to do, that we may know what we ought to say, that we may know we are, what we ought to say as we do what we ought to do. And Father, for that we give you praise and honor and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Man. I'm going to ask that you would turn your Bibles, please, to the 11th chapter of the book of Luke. Luke, the 11th chapter. Praise the Lord. It's, this 11th chapter is such an interesting chapter. It's good to see Gia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. This 11th chapter is such an interesting chapter. And as we have read in this 11th chapter, we see where Jesus used a bunch of woes. He said, woe unto you, Pharisees. And, and we take it so lightly when he says, woe unto you, Pharisees. But church, this is so powerful because it deals with the attitude of these Pharisees which affect us. So Jesus used these words. In, 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 this is that, that, that great anti-Pharisee discourse. Jesus was giving to the Pharisees. And in the book of Matthew, and we, we, we don't want to turn that just yet, but in the book of Matthew, in that 23rd chapter, it contained the same discourse that Jesus was giving to the Pharisees that was spoken in the temple during the last week of his Ministry. We're talking about the last week of his ministry. 
uh, do you know what he was going through the last week of his ministry? Do you know that there was an, an emotional thing with Jesus in going to the cross as it got closer and closer to the cross, the human side of Jesus began to rise up. The Bible says that he took some of his disciples to, to the garden to pray. And, and he told them, wait here while I go and pray. Then he went away for an hour and prayed. Then he came back. He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Church, that was not just for then. Because we are living in times that leads up to the last week on earth. Very stressful, very hard, very cruel times. So if you're not watching and praying, you, you, you're walking through this thing. I mean, headed for destruction. He went away again and to pray another hour. And he came back and he said, watch and pray. And he, and he went away again to pray again for another hour. And he came back and they were asleep. The Bible says when Jesus went into the garden to pray, he was in such agony that he began to sweat as it were drops of blood. Because it was very agonizing yes. to him to realize that I'm going to the cross and, 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 and the, the punishment, the abuse, the suffering that I will take. No normal human being can deal with that. So Jesus gave these disciples or these Pharisees this discourse concerning woes. It, it, it formed the solemn close of his public teaching. And at the end of it, he did, did departed out of the temple to return no more to the temple. He, he, he remember. In, that, in the book of Matthew, he, he told uh, uh, the people in the temple, he says, you will not see me until you are able to say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Blessed is he that, is, that cometh in the name of the Lord. You won't see me anymore until you say that. Luke records that our Lord spoke at this particular meal, the occasion being a wonder of the Pharisees at his not washing his hands before he ate. Parts of that discourse with which he afterwards solemnly closed his public ministry. Jesus, after this particular discourse in the book of Luke, he closed his public ministry. What that means is he didn't deal with the public anymore. He dealt only with his disciples and the apostles. That's just how special his disciples were to him and his apostles, that he would only deal with them teaching them, preparing them, getting them ready for his crucifixion and for his departure. Luke, the 11th chapter. Let's look at verse 37. Luke 11, 37. We're going to try to get through all of this today. If not, we'll just deal with what we didn't deal with next week. Verse 37. It says, and as he spake, 
a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. It, it makes you wonder, as evil and, and, ta and an antagonistic as they were, why would he ask Jesus to come and have a meal with him? When you invite somebody to have a meal, that means that he's a friend, you know him, the acquaintance that you have made with him has stuck for, for a while, and, and you, you, you're buddies. Yes. You respect him. Yes. So this particular Pharisee besought Jesus, or he asked Jesus to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meal because Jesus knew that this is another opportunity to speak on behalf of God and to draw this person unto himself. So when he said that, that he besought him to dine with him, this was not a lunch or a dinner. This was a morning breakfast that they had invited, that he had invited Jesus to come after Jesus had had morning prayer. Mm -hmm. Pastor, why are you saying all of that? It's because I firmly believe that everything that Jesus did here in the Gospels, we should be doing. Yeah. All right. All right. So what should we be doing, Pastor? We should be having morning prayer. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Verse 38. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. The Pharisees always washed their hands before they ate. It didn't matter what meal it was, even if it wasn't a meal, just a snack. They always washed their hands before they ate. This was a tradition that the Pharisees got from the forefathers, that the forefathers claimed that they got from Moses. See, there is a written tradition and there is a oral tradition. And this particular tradition is an oral tradition that they got from Moses. Moses called all the elders together and gave them this, what, 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 what the fathers say was an added law, which was spoken to them. Not the written law, but the added law. Remember what Jesus told the Pharisees? Your tradition make the word of God of no effect. Because you place the tradition above the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what the, the, this Pharisees were doing here. How can you eat and not wash your hands? So what? How can I live without the word? Amen. Amen. Remember Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. How are you living? Amen. How are you living? You. So he marveled that he had not first washed. And the Lord said unto him, you know, you know, there had Jesus either read this, mind, this man's mind interpreted this man's thoughts or something had to be said. Because if you look at verse 39, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Now do, you, do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter? Y'all make clean the outside of the cup. Our subject this morning is making both the inside and the outside clean. He was not talking about a cup. Yeah, yeah. He was not talking about a literal cup. He was talking about what goes on on the inside and how it affects the outside. Amen, amen. What's going on 
on the inside of you? Is it affecting what's happening on the outside of you? So Jesus said, now do ye Pharisees may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward parts is full of raving and wickedness. It's full of rave, raving and wickedness. Now, now, what is raving? The reason why I ask that question is because when we're sitting at home reading and we come across a word that we just don't normally use, when was the last time you used the word raven? I don't think I ever used that word. But when you see that word, to help you fulfill or to understand the particular verse that you are reading, go find out what it means. Find out what it means. And, 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 and this, this particular word, raving, it means to seize upon with force. It means plundering. It means robbing. This is what the Pharisees were doing to the people. Notice what Jesus said. He says, e -e -e but your inward parts is full of raving. It's full, it, it's grasping or robbing, and it's full of wickedness. Jesus is saying, this is what you are full of, and you, and you want me to wash my hands. Jesus criticized them drastically for their hypocrisy. You know, we have to be careful about hypocrisy. When we come together, we have to be very careful about hypocrisy. And I don't want y'all to see the real me. I don't want you to see how I may have acted at home. So what do I do? I change how I act when I get to church. All of y'all do it. Y'all look at me like, Pastor, you you change the way you act. Yeah, we all change the way we act. Amen. But they harbored all kinds of covetousness and cruelty in their hearts. Jesus said, but your inward parts is full of raving and wickedness. The outside and the inside and the inward parts of a man are not the outside and the inside, or it is the outside and the inside of his body. He's, he, he's not talking about what's on the inside of the body. He's talking about the attitude of the individual, the, his, his behavior, how he acts, the way he, 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 he treats people. Look at verse 40. Praise the Lord. Verse 40 said, you fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? He made that which is without. So if you're going to act one way, then you need to act both ways. If you're going to, if you're going to on the inside have an attitude of, 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 lifting up the name of Jesus, then you should have that same attitude on the outside because he that made the outside made the inside also. That's right. That's right. Then he says in verse 41, but rather give alms of such things as you have. Man, Jesus goes in the areas where, he didn't ex where they didn't expect it. Now, what brought up alms? The man, I, 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 I imagine this Pharisee hate he opened his mouth because Jesus is pouring everything out upon them. 
See, I, I believe Jesus was waiting for the opportunity to have these Pharisees in his presence that he may speak to him. But you know, this is only one Pharisee that he's dealing with. He says in verse 41, but rather give alms of such things as you have. What are alms? Is that like your arms? So he said, but rather give your finances, give your money, give your possession of such things as you have. Don't hold back, but give your possessions of such things as you have. So what is he saying to us? When, you, when it comes to the poor, we are to help the poor without expecting anything back from the poor. They are poor. Don't embarrass them because they are poor. Don't walk around them because they are poor. But he said, give to the poor, expecting nothing back. This is what the law of Moses declared. And this is why he's speaking to these Pharisees out of the law. And behold, all things are clean unto you. You do that, then all things are clean unto you. Look at verse 42. But woe unto you. Now he began to deal with the woes. He began to deal with the woes. A woe, a W-O-E, is associated with warnings, and judgment. When Jesus began to declare these woes, what he was saying was, prepare yourself for God's judgment. One of the most common associations of woes has in the Bible is that of judgment. Verse 42 starts a, 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 a number of, of series of woes in these verses. And, it, and, and, and when Jesus began his woes, it's like there was everything that this Pharisee did, it called for a woe in your life. Now what I want us to do is, I want us to check out these woes. Because I don't want to hear a woe in my life. So verse 42 began the, uh, starts off a, a, a series of woes in these verses in which Jesus continually uses the word woe in his condemnation of the scribe and the Pharisees. So woe in verse 45 denotes a grieving, Given up to judgment. The Lord Jesus Christ was grieving and giving out these woes. But it was leading up to judgment. And I believe that the reason why he grieved is because the people that the Pharisees dealt with were doing without. Plus they were experiencing hardship from the Pharisees. They were mean. They were evil. They were wicked. And Jesus grieves for the people. Let me tell you, church, if you don't believe that when you experience hard time, that the Lord Jesus Christ is not grieving for you, you don't know him. When we go through hard time, the Lord Jesus Christ grieves. It, it, you, know, you know, there are certain verses that, we should not forget Deuteronomy 28, 45 through 48. It, it, it always rings in my mind because God is saying that you should always be joyful and cheerful because of what he has promised us. God has promised us life. And that life more abundantly. 
Jesus said, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. So if God wants us to be joyful and cheerful based upon what he had promised us, then we need to know and to understand what he has promised. So if I can't find things to be joyful and cheerful about, you know, according to the law, God is offended. Because he's promised us great promises. These great and precious promises that God has promised to us. And it doesn't always come in the form of money. Amen? Amen? So Jesus says in verse 45, But woe unto you, Pharisees, when you tithe mint and rue. These are simply uh, 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 a No, I need to finish 42. Uh, Yolanda, you, were you at, you were at Pastor Witcher's <laughs> Wednesday, Sunday evening. Um, I'm preaching this. No, I said 42. I'm preaching this. If I say 48, I'm preaching this. <laughs> but he was still preaching that. As I am preaching this. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Verse 42. <laughs> but woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tied mint and rue. Now, now, what is a mint and rue? These are they, they, these are very potent spices. And he said, you tied these spices, mint and rue, and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. See, he's, 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 he's getting ready to, 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 to bring some judgment upon them. He's already told them, woe unto you Pharisees. Well, you, tie, you, 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 you plant gardens. And you, and you pick out of that garden and you tithe the vegetables in that garden. And you pass right over, right over God's love. Yeah, I mean, just walk right on by it just to get to the vegetables that's in the garden that you may tithe these vegetables. Jesus said, these things ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. You should have done these things. And not leave tithing your love. Not leave being nice and kind to people. See, they were expected to tithe God's love. Jesus said, this, 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 this should have done, been done and not leave the other to be undone. Then he says in verse 43, Woe unto you, Pharisees! J J Jesus is on a roll. And this poor Pharisee is just, 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 he has to hear Jesus because Jesus is in his home. He's invited him to dinner, to, to breakfast, to eat. So he has to hear Jesus because Jesus is a guest in his home. You can't be disrespectful to the guest and say, I don't want to hear what you got to say. No, you started this, so I'm going to finish it. All right. So he said, woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the upper room, up, uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the market. You love for people to come to you and greet you in the marketplace. The upper room was a, was a place in, in, in the synagogue where, where, where the, the Pharisees, see, the Pharisees had certain, had different classes. 
And if you were of high class, then you had the uppermost seat. But Jesus said, here you are, you're low class, and you want to take the uppermost seat. And the seating was in, 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 a, in, a, in a circular pattern. So when they sat down, their backs was to the altar, but they faced the people. So they are looking out on the audience to see who's there to see them sitting in places where they didn't belong. So Jesus is laying him out because he loved the uppermost seats in the synagogue and he loved to be recognized in the marketplace. It's like going to the mall. And the purpose of me going to the mall is to see how many people from the Word of Life Christian Church is there so that they can greet me so that everybody can see that I maybe I may be somebody of importance. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Verse 44. Woe unto you, scribe. Now he began to deal with the scribes. The scribe and Pharisees, hypocrites. What is a hypocrite? They tried to give off an air that they were one thing when they were really were something else. How many of you have ever played cards before? How many of you still play cards? All of a sudden, everybody now play these little kitty games. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Jesus said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are the men that walk over them. I'm sorry. For you are as graves, which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. The reason why he uses that is because to touch a dead body or to touch a grave or a casket, you immediately became defiled. So what they would do is, is that whenever there was a grave, they would whitewash it or paint it white so that you could see it even in the dark so that you didn't step on that grave to defile yourself. So Jesus says here, he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are as graves, which appear not. You, know, you, 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 you haven't been whitewashed where people can know your emptiness. And the men that walk over them are not aware of them. So people are being defiled. People are being hurt. People are being dejected by these Pharisees that walk as graves. They are not, they are not identifying themselves. Right. And people are being hurt by it. Yes, we look at verse 45. Then answered one of the lawyers. A lawyer was simply an expert of the law. He was simply an expert of the law, or expert in the law. He interpreted the, the law. He made sure that people followed the law. So then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, or this saying, you reproaches us all. We don't like what you're saying. You're coming against us all. You're abusing all of us. He had the audacity to speak for everybody. Jesus says in verse 46, Woe well, unto you also! <laughs> you lawyers. 
For you laden men with burdens, grievous, to be born, and you yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. You put heavy burdens upon men. See, the law says that on, on, on the Sabbath, you couldn't do anything on the Sabbath. No form of work. You couldn't, you, 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 you couldn't walk a certain distance on the Sabbath. Jesus said, you put heavy burdens upon men. You, you strapped them down with all of these burdens. Amen. You know, there, there's this, this pastor that, that said some bad things about the Supreme Court justice that, that just passed. He said he prayed. He said he was in, I'm repeating what he said. He said he was in Washington, D.C., praying with a bunch of pastors or evangelists. And he told them that they need to pray that, that, that Judge Gingrich would die. And he, and he said, look at what happened. Right after we prayed, she died. And he began to preach that in his church. Right here in Waco. He began to preach that in his church. And he got a round of applause. He got standing ovation. He got people that was yelling. And the more they yelled, the louder he got. I mean, he was screaming and hollering. And this, and this was on Facebook, and it began to go out. And people began to chime in on, against him. I, I want to read something to us. It's in, the, it's in the book of Luke. It's in the ninth chapter. Verse 55 and verse 56. Remember when, 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 when Jesus' disciples asked him, should we call down fire from heaven as Elijah did upon these men? And listen to what Jesus said to them. He said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. You don't know what manner of spirit you are of. Then he says in that last verse, in, that, in verse 56, for the, soul of man, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Amen. Amen. When the public began to get on this man's case for making that statement about the reason she died is because he prayed that she would die. Then he began to change his tune. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't mean it that way. I meant that we need to stop the mouths of the lions, the great lion that's been killing babies. We need to stop them. That ain't what he said, because I'm, I'm listening to what he said on Facebook. See, when you begin to talk that way and deal that way, you put burdens on people's shoulders. We have a lot of people that are being burdened today right here in America based upon things that are being said. So Jesus said, woe unto you lawyers. For you laden men with burdens, grievous to be born. You know, it, it would be the same as if I came in here and told you I'm expecting the, the Flournoy family, I'm expecting the Spivey uh, family, I'm expecting Brother James family, Brother Lehman family, I'm expecting each one of these families to give me $3,000 during our Founders Day celebration. No less. That's a burden. That's a burden. Jesus said, you, 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 you weigh people down with these heavy burdens, and you won't touch them, not even with one finger. 
Woe unto you, verse 47. Woe unto you. For you build the, the, the sepulchres or the grave of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly you bear witness that you allow the deeds of the fathers. You know, you know when he talks about the, 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 the fathers and the prophets, and he, give, he began to deal with the law, what he is doing is he's showing the purpose of the prophets and the purpose of the law. See, see when, 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 when things was prophesied concerning him, we should be looking for a manifestation of these prophecies. And these prophecies are to identify the Lord Jesus Christ. These prophecies are to show, are to be shown to the people. This is what the Pharisees and the lawyers were, in, what were, were supposed to do. Was show to the people the manifestation of these prophecies. Amen. Show them Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Was to show them Jesus. At verse 49, therefore also said the wisdom of God. I looked that up, and, and what this is saying, the wisdom of God didn't speak, but he's referencing God's wisdom as it is. So he says here in verse 49, therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. That the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. Because, see, there were prophets in the Old Testament that were killed. And the blood of the, 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 the Bible says that the blood of these prophets cries out from the altars. And then in verse 51 it says, from the blood of Abel, remember Abel yes. that was killed by his brother Cain? Mm -hmm. And the blood of Abel, the Bible says it still speaks today. So from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, Zacharias was killed behind the altar, which perished between the altars and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Amen. So if this is to be required of this generation, the Pharisees and the lawyers has to begin to teach this stuff to this generation so that this generation would understand and to know, to look for the coming of their Messiah. Yes. So they were not looking for the coming of the Messiah. Why? Because the Pharisees were not teaching this stuff. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. They were shutting up knowledge. Yes, Lord. Yes. Look at verse 52. Woe unto you lawyers. But you have taken away the key of knowledge. So what is knowledge to you? It should be everything to us. Amen, amen. He says, you, you lawyers have taken away the key of knowledge. The knowledge is the key. Yes, yes. And the key is to do what? Open, Open to unlock. So they had closed up knowledge, and the people had no knowledge of the Messiah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If I have a clear revelation, a clear understanding of healing, did you hear what Elder said this morning? He said, sickness has no place in this body. That's knowledge. That should be open unto us. Amen. That when sickness try to enter into this body, I have knowledge in what to do about sickness trying to enter into my body. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Some 
Somebody ought to say amen to that. So woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, you hindered. You hindered them from entering in into this knowledge. You hindered them from entering in to this knowledge. What is the purpose of of knowledge. Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The key is the knowledge. Being that right understanding of the law and the prophets. Notice I said the key, the key is the knowledge. Being that right understanding of the law and the right understanding of the law and the prophets. If I told you concerning healing, wait until you feel better, I have closed up knowledge. All right. Because that's not what the word says. The word says by his stripes we were healed. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. The same way with any subject. Yes. If I close off the knowledge, if I, if I lock it up. Amen, amen. Because see, God had given the Pharisees the revelation of the law and the prophets. They knew. But they had closed off. They had locked up the key to knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. They were not opening it up. Thank you. See, that's why, that's why I as a pastor can't rely upon me. I have to rely upon the Holy Spirit and what he wants taught in this house. How do we walk? By faith. By trusting God. By trusting his word. By clinging unto God. Glory to God. And the prophet should show him to the people. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As there were many prophetic scriptures of the coming Messiah, mm -hmm. the prophets were to show him to the people. The prophet was to take these scriptures and show the people that Jesus is their Messiah Amen. and that he is coming and how he is coming. So that when he appears, they know who he is. Amen. So when you take this word and begin to read this word, you don't have to guess at what's going on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because it's explained yes. that you may take and show him to the people. You need to be able to show him Amen. to the people. You need, when you go to share Christ, you need to be able to show him based upon scripture to the people so that they would have no doubt of who he is. Amen. Otherwise, Jesus will give us a woe. To show to the people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That he, they should show him to the people of whom they should be testifying about. If they should have been testifying about the coming Messiah, we should be testifying of the Messiah coming for the church. We should be testifying, church. Just the expounders of scriptures had taken away, or these Pharisees and lawyers had taken all of this away. They were not testifying about Jesus. They were not talking about Jesus. They were not telling the people how he should come. 
neither themselves entered nor permitted those to enter who were otherwise doing so, they were not permitting them to enter in. Shutting up the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. Shutting it up in men's faces. Amen. The Pharisees, despite looking holy mm -hmm. on the outside, they were rotten mm -hmm. to the very core. Right. I want you to turn to the book of Romans. Romans, the 14th chapter. We're getting ready to close. But we're going to close out in Romans the 14th chapter. Are you there? Praise God. Romans, the 14th chapter. We're going to read verse 17. Romans 14, 17. Let's read 16 and 17. I, 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 I want to read 16 just for the sake of you hearing it. He said, let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. When you see the word meat, it means the kingdom of God is not food and drink. But the kingdom of God, this is what the kingdom of God is. We are in the kingdom of God. And if we are not these three things, we are not in the kingdom of God. We cannot enter into the kingdom of God without being these three things. And this is how we should be living based upon these three things, church. See, when we talk about righteousness, when we talk about righteousness, we have to talk about faith. Have to. Because when, 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 when Abraham believed God, the Bible said it was put to his account. Those of you that have a bank account, they, they, they put it to your account when you deposit money. That God put it to Abraham's account that he was righteous because he believed God. Amen. Amen. So verse 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. How dare us think that the kingdom of God is meat and drink, food and drink. How dare we, 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 we bring the kingdom down so lowly to think that it's meat and drink. But the kingdom of God is righteousness. Right standing with God. Being justified by God. Being declared by God to be in the right through the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we talk about Jesus taking the, the, the sins of the world in his own body. When we talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. Sprinkle the unclean. That's what made us righteous. But righteousness and peace and joy can't leave out the last part in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. See, it's the Holy Spirit that when we began our worship service, it's, I, I believe it all starts before we began the worship service. Yeah. But it's the Holy Spirit that want to take us in before the Father, that we may worship him there, that we may offer up praise yeah. unto God, that we would give God thanksgiving. We cannot go where we have not been before. So the Holy Spirit would lead us to where we have not been before. Peace. A peace. Jesus said in the 17th chapter of the book of John 
He said, my peace, I leave with you. I'm about to go away, but I'm leaving you my peace. And, he said, and you know, he was talking to, 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 to the disciples, to the apostles. And then he began to talk about us. He said, my, I, I've got to leave my peace with them also. We have the peace that Jesus Christ operated in while he was here on this earth. We have that peace. There's not a different form of peace. We have that peace. Peace is an absence of all turmoil around us that we will not get all bent out of shape because of this COVID-19. But we follow the instructions of CDC. But our confidence and our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy. Joy is not happiness. Because happiness only lasts as long as you are happy. And once you stop being happy, if that was joy, you ain't got no more joy. But you have joy regardless of what's going on around you. Remember Deuteronomy 28? God expect us to be joyful yes. based upon what he has promised to us. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible says that God is faithful that promised. Yes, yes, yes. He's faithful. faithful. Hold him to what he's promised yes, us. Yes, Tell it back to him. God, you promised me that this would happen. You promised out of your word, God, that this would happen. Not that what you say put God under obligation. God was already under obligation to fulfill his word to us. All we're doing is he, him, telling, him giving us permission to put him in remembrance of his word. I mean, I mean, you, you can't find another God like that. Speak back to me what I've said to you. Glory to God. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Are you clean on the inside, but not clean on the outside? All of, those, all of those woes that Jesus gave to the Pharisees and to the lawyers, that means that, 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 that grief, the grief that he was experiencing was leading him to the judgment of God. He was judging them as he was speaking. He was judging them, church, and they didn't even realize it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, what kind of, I I mean, our Savior, our Lord and, and, and Savior, Jesus Christ, he was grieved. Grieved the way the Pharisees were treating the people. He was grieved, church. Grieving to judgment. They had no clue of what was going on. And they were the leaders of the whole nation. The leaders. But they had no clue of what was going on. Should have been teaching the people and presenting to the people the Lord Jesus Christ through the word. That the people would see Jesus in the word. So when we read that there were multitudes of people that were following Jesus. The reason they were following Jesus because they were seeing a manifestation of something that they had not seen before. They followed him wherever he went. Thank you, 
great multitudes. But the problem we face today is that Satan has deceived mankind that whatever is good, he makes it a lie. And whatever is a lie, he tries to make it good. And mankind has fallen for that deception. But there is a day of reckoning, a day of judgment coming that we all are going to have to give an account of what we have done in this body. Praise the Lord. All heads are bowed and all eyes are closed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we stand before you today, we thank you, Father God, for the Lord Jesus Christ in his compassion, in his mercies. God, for the people, that he would be grieved at the way the Pharisees and the lawyers has dealt with the people. How they had closed up the kingdom of God and wouldn't go in themselves. And those that did want to go in, they were not permitting them to go into the kingdom. Father, we thank you that the cup it's clean on the inside and the out. We thank you, Father God, that the Lord Jesus Christ has cleaned us up. And we're grateful and thankful to you, Father. We thank you, Father, that Jesus has brought to us, the Lord Jesus has brought to us divine healing. Father God, that his righteousness is in us. Therefore, Father, sickness has no place in this body. We thank you, Father, that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us the rights to command sickness and disease out of our bodies. God, for that we give you praise and honor and glory with thanksgiving. Father, and I pray for those souls, God, that are not saved. I pray, Father, that you would touch hearts. Draw the lost souls under yourself. I thank you, Father God, for everyone that you draw to yourself, that you will in no wise turn anyone away, for you receive all that come unto you. Save, Lord Jesus. Save, Lord Jesus. Save, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Save, Lord. For there are many lost souls out there. Father God, according to the word of God, we give you praise and honor and glory with thanksgiving. Father, while we have our heads bowed and eyes closed, if there's anyone in the audience that's sick in their bodies, we believe, Father God, that the laying on of hands bring forth healing through the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone today that's sick in their bodies that need hands laid on them for healing, anyone, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may look up. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord.